Hey, what up everyone? I'm Cynical, and this is Gems of War. And today I want to go over the top 10 common troops in the game. Now, a caveat here. I uh, just want to say this before we get started. These are just my top 10 commons um this is not like a list decided on by all the top figures in gems of war and we all came together and decided these are the meta common troops the top 10 meta common troops in the game that are the best and used the most no this is just my favorite top 10 common troops um now would most of these be on that list yeah i would say you know 70 percent of them 75 percent whatever you want to say would probably be on that list so this is a good list to um get a good idea of what the top 10 commons are in the game and to help you uh you know weed out the bad ones and uh target some of the good ones maybe start using them in a team or go get them if you don't have them just keep an eye on them fully trade them you know metal them up all that kind of stuff so just wanted to do my top 10 commons and uh, some of these we still use at the end of the game. Some of them we don't use anymore, but I have fond memories of. And uh, some of them you just can't leave off of the list. So, And there's a lot that were like um, similar. So some of them probably deserve to be on the list, but they were so similar to something else that I just, I'm going to mention them alongside of those. So let's get started. And I might show some teams, I don't know. I don't want the video to be too long. And we could probably do teams like in another video or whatever. Alright, let's go to... Uh, base rarity. Apply filter. Go all the way down to commons. And I want to start with some honorable mentions so this is the honorable mentions part of the list um, they just didn't make it on the list they didn't happen to make it on the list um, but I wanted to mention them uh, I'll be mentioning some other like I said alongside there's some troops that are so similar that they should probably be in the honorable mentions at least but I'm gonna mention them alongside other troops later on in the list so if you don't hear them here you might hear them later, and they'll still be also honorable mentions, but not part of the top ten. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, the first honorable mention I want to do is... Let's go up to the Ds. What's what's a D troop that, that you think I'm going to mention? Alright, honorable mention, we have Dragon Eggs. Now, the reason it didn't make the list is because on its own it's not very good so I didn't want to put it on the list because if you put this on a team it's not gonna like win you any battles it's not gonna really help you out that much but it's a, a big part of one of the best teams in the game so I thought it deserved to be mentioned um, it's a big part of the skeleton key team so uh, it's fully metaled, as you can see. I fully metaled it. Um, it's 10 yellow mana. Uh, Dragon's Claw Dragon. It does hatch. Summon a baby dragon. Gain 6 life. Uh, dragon Bond. Allied dragons gain 2 life. Immunity to burning and fairy fire. Spawn 25% chance to summon a baby dragon on death. And the only reason I'm mentioning it is because with the key team... With Egg Thief, it summons Dragon Eggs. So some of the time, what's going to happen is you're going to lose your Cedric. And then, hopefully, before you lose your Egg Thief, you can cast it and summon a ba uh, Dragon Eggs into that first slot. So it's a part of one of the teams that are <laughs> that's used in the game the most. So you really want to not forget about it. You want to level it up fully ascend it metal it if you can um just wanted to mention it because it's part of the key team so honorable mention there 
next honorable mention before we get to the <clears throat> top 10 list proper is in the M's. We have Mammoth. I don't think anybody really talks about Mammoth that much. Uh, but whenever I see it in Arena... So this list will also be good for Arena. If you like to play Arena, you know how you get random commons at the very beginning. Uh, so a lot of these will be good in your Arena teams. Like Mammoth here. The only time I've ever used it is in Arena. But when I do see it pop up in Arena, I'm like... Yes, I'm glad. Because it's decent. Um, it's Urskaya. 10 brown. It's a beast. And here's what I like about it for Arena. Remove all blue gems. Deal 32 damage to an enemy's life and armor. Boosted by gems removed. So it's dealing 32 damage to their life and their armor. And it's getting boosted by... Uh, the blue gems you remove so it does a decent amount of damage for a common and in the arena it's a really big help it's a good damage dealer <clears throat> it has beast bond allied beast gain two life insulated immunity to frozen and big gain one life on four or five gem matches so outside of like arena it's not that great i mean you could probably do something with it very 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 early in the game uh but in arena it's pretty good if you see it pop up. As long as it's not any of these other troops I'm going to mention, you might want to take it, you know? If it's alongside of something else in the top 10, maybe don't take it. But if you need damage, and you already have, like, mana generation, and you need a brown troop, it's not that bad. It's pretty decent for a common troop. Alright, last honorable mention is in the Gs. Can you think of a G? It's Goblin. This almost made the list. That's why it's the last honorable mention. I think you get it for free at the very beginning of the game. Um, the reason I put it on the list, honestly, is it gains an extra turn. So it'll deal 36 damage to an enemy, gain an extra turn. So it's pretty much like free damage. Uh, you can get it up. It's really low mana cost. Six green mana. That's like a, you can match that and get it. Pretty much, you know? Almost. Um, but it's really low mana cost. That's one of the best things about it. And then it also gains an extra turn. So, it's like a free 36 damage to an enemy. Because you can still use a different troop after that. So, you get it's easy to get up. And then you cast it. And it's like just extra damage. Because you gain an extra turn. You get to do something else after you cast it. So, I really like it. It's like... <laughs> get taking and you know getting an extra some extra damage in there for free whenever you get to use it uh, but six green mana goblin from Zajin you get it for free at the very beginning of the game that's the only reason I didn't put it on the list because I don't know it almost made it I really don't know why I didn't put it on the list it just couldn't fit I just couldn't fit it on there it's probably my own fault I probably put something I like on the list instead of something that should be on there but it's my list so but yeah, deal 36 damage to an enemy, gain an extra turn. So it works really good. Just remember to use it whenever it's up, because there's no reason not to, because you gain an extra turn, pretty much. It's got Greedy, gain 2 bonus gold on 4 or 5 gem matches. Human Slayer, deal double skull damage versus humans. And Nature Link, gain bonus green mana from green gem matches. So that even helps get that 6 uh, all the way up, usually with just one match. All right. Now to the list proper. Number 10 common. My top 10. My number 10 for this list is... Now the reason this is number 10 is because it got nerfed into the ground. But it used to be one of the... It used to be the best common in the game. So I had to put it on my top 10 list. It's one of my favorites. I like the troop art. I like the idea of it. And it, and it used to be on one of the meta teams in the game. Uh, nowadays, with the changes to Deathmark, it's not as good. But you can still use it really early in the game. And it looks cool, so... Um, might want to make a team around it just for fun. But uh, Wraith is 7 blue. Galvania, Undead. 
Wraith Touch, steal 33 life from an enemy, or steal their mana. So that's one part that it's not the greatest because you never know what it's going to do. It's going to do one of those two things. So hopefully the enemy has some mana um, when you cast it on it. So make sure you target enemies that have mana in case it does the steal their mana part. Uh, but the steal 33 life, you get to damage them for 33, and then you get to gain 33. So that's really good early in the game. And then stealing their mana, you only have a 7 mana cost, 7 blue. Uh, so when you steal their mana, as long as you, as long as they have at least 7, you get to have it up again to do it, you know. You can really mess with the other team. You can really um, just screw with the other team with this thing. And on top of everything else, uh, Undying, Immune to Poison, Disease, and Deathmark. Death Touch, inflict death mark when doing skull damage. So you really want to have this thing in first slot. That way it can do death mark. But with the changes to death mark now, it used to be that when you put a death mark on something, um, you know, there's a 10% chance each each turn for them to die or whatever, and it keeps going up and up and up every turn. Well, if you reapply it, it starts that counter over now. It used to not do that used to be it would not restart the counter so if you, if you did a death mark on something it would start the counter okay this turn they have 10 percent chance to die next turn they have 20 percent next turn they have 30 percent chance to die next turn they have 40 percent chance to die now you inflict it you do a skull damage to it it puts death mark on it okay now they have a 10 percent chance to die next turn you do something else so now they have a 20% chance to die. The next turn you take another Skull, you hit them, you add another uh, Death Mark, now they have a 10% chance to die. It resets it. Used to be it didn't do that, so you just do a bunch of Skulls to them, and uh, it would just... They would die to Death Marks. Something would die to Death Marks during that time while you're stealing life, stealing mana. This is a really good... It used to be a really, really, really good troop. Also inflicts Frozen when doing Skull damage, so... It's still fun to use, but now you have to, like, take the skull. You have to do one skull match and then not take skulls after that so that your death mark can keep going up and up and up. And a lot of the time, you'll just kill them before they die of the death mark now. And it used to be that you could, uh, you know, it would the counter would keep going up. It wouldn't reset whenever you reapplied the death mark, so used to be way better. You'd use it with like a Bone Dragon Courage team and uh, it was pretty meta for a while there. Um, but yeah, that's my number 10. Number 9 we have starts with the P. I did Priestess uh, for number 9. Um, I don't know. I just feel like it should be on the list. Just like a, a, a type of troop here that can cleanse and barrier you know maybe you don't have a cleanse or a barrier option yet early in the game as with the common troop whenever i see it pop up in arena i take it a lot of the time so i can like barrier and cleanse my my uh runic blade or my dawnbringer or my you know whatever i'm using life and death whatever um especially runic blade uh even though it uses the same mana color um I don't know. I just see my find myself using it quite a bit in arena whenever I play arena, and uh, whenever you see it, you might want to take it if you need uh, if you already have your damage covered and everything. But it's nine yellow, uh, white helm, divine human. Protection, cleanse an ally and give 37 armor and barrier to them. So it's really good. At, like if you get entangled in first slot with your hero, um, you get you know whatever death marked in first slot with your hero uh you get frozen whatever some annoying thing that happens you can cleanse that away with this troop while also giving them armor and a barrier so i thought it was a decent like supplementary troop a support troop so i wanted to put some kind of good support troop on this list and uh, i only have like one other good support troop on here so I wanted to make sure this one made it um, allied divines gain two life 
all allies gain two random skill points and recover one life at the start of each turn. So I just, just thought it had to make the list. And it had to go above Wraith because Wraith got nerfed into the ground. So, And these are kind of, these are definitely in order. Uh, we're starting from the bottom going to number one. But here is number eight. What do we have? And y'all might be surprised by this one. I don't think very many people talk about this one. But it's one of my favorite ones. Um, ghoul. Whenever this thing pops up in Arena, I like to use it. That's kind of what I'm going by on for this list. Um, either things I like to use in Arena, or things I still use now, or things that I used to use when I was a uh, lower level. That's kind of what I went with for this list. So this is an another one of the are Arena ones. Um, you might not use it in a team like proper outside of Arena, but it's really... F I like when it pops up in Arena, so I wanted to put it on the list. It's one of my favorites. Uh, cool troop art. Um, and it does it has a cool spell but it's eight brown galvania undead uh, bite deal 35 damage to the first enemy and eliminate one point from all of their skills destroy six gems what I like about about it <clears throat> it does decent damage and then it destroys gems so um, also a mana generator and destroying six gems really good uh, removed from the board with full effect as if they were matched. Um, not as good as exploding six gems, but still does it helps with your mana generation and, while doing damage. And doing good good damage and eliminating one point from all of their skills. So it really cripples that first enemy and then it also, you know, six destroys six gems to help with mana generation. Not a lot, but... It's really good. It's got three different things it's doing, so that's why I like it. Deals decent damage, eliminates one point from all of their skills, and destroys six gems. Doing three different things. It's a really good, um, like, uh, utility troop. Uh, if you see it pop up in Arena. You know, I wouldn't make a team around it for PvP or anything, but... In Arena. Human Slayer. Deal double skull damage versus humans. Stone Link. Gain bonus brown mana from brown gem matches. And Undying. Immune to poison disease and death mark. So yeah. Maybe not something you would put on your list. But I like the troop art. I like. I just like it. It's kind of like Wraith for me. But uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Time for the D. One, two, three. We are on number seven. Number seven. Oh, I couldn't leave off the dire wolf. <laughs> couldn't leave off the dire wolf. Got it on bronze. I should probably have that on gold. Let's go do that right now. Dire wolf. Metals. I don't use it that much anymore, but... Definitely want to metal it. I think I'm going to do two guards. I don't know why I like doing that. 100%. What's it gain? I should probably be meddling all of these as I say them. I might do that from now on. Um, meddle it up. Because this could be the top 10 commons to meddle. But I don't know how what I'm going to frame it as. Probably just the top 10 commons. Um, and do that. And we got it to gold now. Yeah, I guess I don't want to meddle ghoul and priestess. But dire wolf I think deserves it. Number 7 on the list. Getting a bunch of magic. Getting one of everything and two magic. That's decent. Anyway, Dire Wolf. Eight green. Magrim Woods Beast. Entangle and Hunter's Mark the first enemy. Deal 41 damage to them. If there are 13 or more green gems, gain an extra turn. So, like I was... The reason, the reason I was liking the ghoul, the reason I was liking the goblin... It's like a ghoul and a goblin combined, kind of. Um, you get to entangle and hunter's mark the first enemy. So, usually you will use the dire wolf in first slot. Because um, you'll entangle and hunter's mark the first enemy. Deal 41 damage to them. And if there's 13 or more green gems, gain an extra turn. Uh, so maybe use it with some sort of green mana generator. <clears throat> so you can try for that extra turn. It doesn't happen that often. But... By entangling and hunters marking the first enemy, you also get a uh, deal double skull damage versus entangled enemies. So you're going to deal double skull damage 
because you're always going to have them entangled unless they have immunity to entangle. Plus Hunter's Mark, so you deal like triple damage or whatever it may be. What's Hunter's Mark do? Mark troops take double damage from Skull Gems. So double damage plus you're dealing another double damage versus entangled. So as long as they can be entangled, you're dealing like whatever, double damage and then double damage. Whatever that is. Is that three times or is that four? I don't know. It's a lot of damage. So with its 46 attack, that goes up to what? 92? And then another at least probably 46? So 138 or something like that? That's a lot of damage. Uh, especially early in the game. So gain one attack for each green ally. So if your team's full of green, you're going to gain even more. Uh, possibly up to 50 attack. Which your attack won't be the same as mine, but whatever. I'm just using it as an example. Uh, you'll still get triple your attack with Entrapment and uh, uh, Hunter's Mark. But yeah, Entrapment deal double skull damage versus entangled enemies. They're gonna be entangled if you cast on, as long as you cast on them first. And 20% um, chance to dodge skull damage. So Agile, it could dodge. It has a little bit of skull mitigation there. That, you know, RNG type skull mitigation, but decent troops. Sometimes you use like two of them. That way, if the first one dies, you still have another one. Uh, I don't know. I don't have any teams for it at the moment. I've, I've experimented with using like three of them in something or two of them in, in a couple things, but just experiment with it. Uh, it's a really good troop. You see it in uh, Arena, you use it. And even outside of Arena, you could use it maybe for PvP or something, uh, or Green Guild Wars or whatever, as long as you're a low level. Uh, it's not really used. In, in the end game, but it's a really good common troop for early game and arena and stuff like that. So, maybe keep an eye out for the Dire Wolf. Alright, number six. It's another one I just couldn't leave off the list, but it's not used a ton anymore. But I just wanted to put it on here. Firebomb. Uh, four red, Broken Spire, Elemental. Explode four red gems. Deal 36 damage to a random enemy and destroy myself. So, once you cast it, it's gone. You can't use it anymore. That's why it's not higher up on the list. Uh, just the number six on the list. But it's a good. At, it's good at mana generating and doing some damage at the same time. Goes good with Sunbird, um, which is like the uh, discount Rowan team. Sunbird and Fire Bombs uh, and your hero. Um, that's a good quick kill team for early in the game. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was. It's like Sun, Sunbird, uh, some kind of hero, possibly like Black Manacles or whatever, and then um, two firebombs, I think. So you blow up both your firebombs. By the time you do that, your Sunbird's up, and uh, you cast it, and you win. So really good. For that team, at least. Also, it's an empowered common. So empowered is like the be one of the best traits in the game. So any commons that have empowered, definitely uh, wanted to put at least one of them on this list. But yeah, elemental bond, allied elementals gain two life. Fire spirit gain one magic for each red ally. And empowered start battles with full mana. So make sure you fully trade it. It just gets you off to a really fast start. By exploding four red gems, and you know when you explode a gem, it destroys the gem and eight gems around it, and skulls deal one damage, but only 50% of mana is generated. So it's not just destroying one gem, or exploding one gem, it's exploding nine gems, and f times four, so 36 gems. So at least 18 mana if you get 50%, and that's more than enough to get your sunbird up. Uh, so really good. As you can see, a theme to this is uh, troops that do more than one thing, because it's also dealing 36 damage. The only bad part is you uh, can only use it once, so that's why you normally would put two of them on a team. Um, but really low mana cost too, but that doesn't matter because it starts battle with full mana and then it blows itself up. Uh, but Empowered is a really good trait, definitely one of the top three traits in the game, so that means it just starts with full mana. And you can cast it right away, which will get other things up quickly. 
because it's exploding four red gems. So any red troop you can put in first slot, you can get it up pretty quickly, like Sunbird. All right, number five. I showed this troop before in a beginner team. If you want to search my channel for beginner teams, uh, I made a video on this troop. So here it is. I can actually tell you a team for this one. Rockworm is my number five. And it might not be on everybody's list, like I said, but it's on my list because I used it quite a bit when I was a really low level. I used to use, um, I can never think of the first, Deep Bore, Rockworm, Rockworm, Rockworm. Nowadays, you'd want to use your hero in there somewhere so you can level up your classes, but that was a pretty good team back in the day. Uh, reason being, it uses 8 brown mana. It's from Kazeel. It's a monster. Deal 36 damage to the last enemy. Create 7 brown gems. It creates its own color. It creates its own color. So, if you got 3 of them on your team, and you keep casting them over and over and over, you're going to whittle down that last enemy pretty quick, and you're going to be putting a ton of brown on the board. Match it up with Deep Borer, who also puts brown on the board. Is also a decent tank. Gains armor. Explodes a, a, a column. And then puts a bunch of brown on the board. Wow, this thing's putting brown on the board. You're going to get a bunch of extra turns. It's one of the first looping teams in the game. Looping means that you cast, and you get a bunch of extra turns, and then you get to cast again, then you get a bunch of extra turns, then you get to cast again, and the other team doesn't get a turn. So, pretty good for, like, PvP very early in the game, and pretty much anything you want to do very early in the game. It's good in Arena, too. Uh, it's just, like, the very first early looping troop in the game. It gives itself its own mana. Gets a lot of extra turns. Match it with Deep Borer and two other Rockworms, and you're good to go. Go check out that video. Uh, I think it's like Gems of War Beginner Guide. Uh, it's just a, a team, a beginner team. But yeah, deals 36 damage to the last enemy, creates seven brown gems. So if you got three of them doing that, that's just seven brown, seven brown, seven brown. Loop, loop, loop. Deal damage to the last enemy a bunch of times, and you're just whittling them down. Plus, a lot of newer players um, forget to put a back back tank in, so you're going to be hitting them where they're not expecting it. So they're going to put their tank in first slot. They're going to put something they really, really need that's important in the last slot because they don't know how to play the game yet. So, and you're going to crush that last uh, last enemy troop there. So you can take out a lot of noobs with this Rockworm. They're like, why am I not getting a turn? Why is he hitting my last enemy? I thought that was a safe spot. And then, all of a sudden, they lose two of their most important troops before they even get a turn. So, Cunning, it has immunity to Hunter's Mark. Stoneheart, gain one life for each brown ally. So it'll gain, like, four life, if you, or three life at least, uh, if you put two other Rockworms with it, which I would recommend definitely doing two or three Rockworms together, not just one. And then Stone Spirit, gain one magic for each brown ally. So more magic uh, for more rockworms you have together. Okay, number four. Oh, I forgot to mention, with the Firebomb, number six. With the Firebomb, number six. I also wanted to mention, alongside of that, is the Bombot. Kind of the similar troop. Not as good, but similar to the Firebomb. I wanted to mention the Bombot just on somewhere in this list just alongside of Firebomb. Uh, 10 Brown, Adana, Mech, explode two random gems, deal 20 damage to all enemies boosted by armor and destroy myself. So another one of those exploding gems dealing damage to all enemies this time. So you can really like put together a team of three or two or three of these and since it's dealing 20 damage to all enemies you can take them all out as long as your hero survives or whatever whatever else you're using. Uh, it's also um, gets summoned by Cedric from the key team. So he summons one to three bomb bots. Uh, so maybe if you accidentally lose like your greed or, or your hero or something, you can put some bomb bots down here. You're just summoning bomb bots and dragon eggs. Uh, you know, it just helps your team survive. But I wanted to mention bomb bot alongside firebomb. Uh, mech bond, allied mechs gain two life, sturdy, immune to poison, a flame, burn enemies when doing skull damage. 
But usually people use at least two or three of these, uh, just like the the firebomb, just like the rockworm. Um, it's not on the top ten list, but it's an honorable mention alongside firebomb, a weaker version of firebomb, but also kind of does the same thing, and I wanted to mention it. All right, back to number four. Reason I mentioned that extra bombot troop alongside the firebomb is because I'm going to have some troops to mention alongside of this one. All right, number four, I did Justice. Um, it's one of the Guardians, the first batch of Guardians we got. So you can get it with uh, your guild chests, your seals. So pretty easy to get. You'll get a lot of them until you get it fully ascended. Uh, uses 13 blue. It's a Guardian elemental construct. Create 15 gems, a mix of blue and a chosen type. Give 18 life and attack to all other allies boosted by frozen enemies. Uh, so, I used to use it with, um, I think, Kraken and uh, Queen Mab and uh, something else. I don't know. Kraken, Queen Mab, Justice. I guess it was Hero with something. I don't know. I'm going to show that team eventually, but somebody will put it in the comments. What was that old meta team with Kraken and, and Queen Mab and Justice? There's one more troop that goes with it, and I can't think of it right now. Probably something that... Mm, oh, I can't think of it. Anyway, Justice, one of those Guardians, the first batch of Guardians, um, creates a bunch of blue and a chosen type. You get to choose what the other color is. So it's like one of the first uh, dual... Um, not one of the first, but it summons two different colors, a lot of them. Blue in your chosen type, whatever you want that to be. And it gives a life and attack to all other allies, so that's good too. And uh, it's boosted by frozen enemies. Construct Bond, allied construct gain two life. Armored, reduced damage from skulls by 25%. Virtue of Justice, all allies gain three attack and armor when an enemy dies. So I wanted to mention that. Um, I should probably upgrade that too. But I don't really use it anymore. But I used to use it a lot. But alongside Justice, I want to mention... Of course... Uh, the other Guardians. Like Courage is a really good one. Uh, 13 Red. Elemental Construct, it's another Guardian. Create 15 gems, a mix of red and a chosen type. Give 21 attack to all other allies boosted by burning enemies. So it gives just attack, but gives a lot of it. And uh, has all the same stuff kind of here. But used to be used with the, that Bone Dragon Wraith team that I was talking about earlier. So really good. And can't mention those two without mentioning Humility. Humility is really good. You should probably metal it up. Um, create 15 gems, a mix of yellow and a chosen type. Give 33 points to a random skill to all other allies boosted by silenced enemies. So if you get silence like all the other enemies and then happen to get like magic or attack with that uh, random skill there, it can be really good. Especially if you get like looping or whatever with humility, you can end up like making your whole team really strong. So this may be the best one, but I'd pick justice because I used to use it a lot. But uh, yeah, they all go together pretty much. Justice, humility, courage. Uh, definitely want to get all of those like fully ascended and uh, you know fully traded and try to fit them into teams. All you have to do is join a guild to get some seals and there you go. All right, what's next? Did I mention everything I wanted to mention with those last two? I think I did. Okay, number three, common in the game, my top ten is Dwarven Gate. Dwarven Gate, 10 blue. Dwarf construct from Kazeel. Gain 38 armor, boosted by Dwarven allies. All other allies gain barrier and 5 mana. So this team, you can make a really annoying team if you put like 3 of these on a team with your hero. Uh, because they start... Um, they gain 38 armor, boosted by Dwarven allies, first of all. This is a dwarf, so you're going to gain it gain more armor if you have more than one on your team it's one of those another one of those commons where you have to use multiples of the the same troops so like rockworm like firebomb like bombbot like uh, all those like dire wolf sometimes 
you want to use more than one and I think it works best if you use three of them uh, because you're all other allies are gaining barrier and five mana so you cast this this dwarven gate here it's given your other three troops barrier and five mana the mana cost is only 10 so you cast another dwarven gate and you got your uh, third dwarven gate up so then you cast uh, you get barrier for that first dwarven gate that didn't get barrier because it doesn't barrier itself but you get your third dwarven gate up so now you're casting that by the time you cast your third dwarven gate your first one's back up and everything is barriered so you cast the first one it gives five mana to the second one and the third one you cast the second one once you get that one up and it gives five mana to the first one and the third one which gets the third one up you cast that one that gets the first one up you, you see how it's going then you cast the first one that gets the second one up you cast the second one that gets the third one up you cast the third one it gets the first one up once you get it rolling you're gonna have one up at all times always casting barriers on everybody else and then the next one will cast the barrier on that previous one so everything will be barriered everything's gonna have full mana and it's just a crazy team that uh you can use in like guild wars for blue day um i don't know it's just you can put it as your pvp defend and people will get annoyed you can even use it to get through really hard scalable content if you're very early in the game like it'll make it through it as long as you have uh, your your hero doing some sort of damage like maybe black manacles like I keep mentioning or whatever uh, life and death I guess I don't know but really good somebody will put it in the comments what's a good dwarven gate team I know it's three dwarven gates and your hero with some kind of weapon so um, yeah, it's hard to get killed when you're using three Dwarven Gates, and they're always up, and they're always barriered, and everybody's always barriered, but... Dwarf Shield, Allied Dwarves gain two armor, Repair, gain one armor, and four or five gym matches. Stone Skin, reduce damage from Skulls by 50%, so you're gonna have it in first slot. It's gonna be reducing damage from Skulls by 50%, plus it's gonna be barriered all the time, and it's gonna have full mana all the time, so... Third best common in the game, in my opinion. All right, number two, the number two best common in the game. What do we have? We have Finesse. It's one of the newer Guardians. Uh, I don't know when they came out, but it was in the last year, probably the last six, seven, eight months. Um, really good troop here, 11 yellow mana Guardian Strix Construct. Struct. Uh, same way you get uh, courage justice humility is the same way you get finesse uh deal 42 damage to an enemy and a random enemy if the enemy uses yellow mana deal double damage if there is a storm give six mana to all other allies so just like the dwarven gate just like the rock worms another one of those troops you're going to use multiples of the same troop so three finesses with nimbus bow so finesse finesse Nimbus Bow Finesse. There's your team for you. I still use it uh, at this time. Um, it's really good because you cast it. It deals double damage versus yellow enemies. Um, you get a Storm going. You use it with Storm Caller. You got a fully trade Storm Caller and use it because it does a yellow storm at the start of every turn. Uh, so if there is a storm, it gives six mana to all other allies. So then it gives six mana to all the other finesses, which is more than half its mana. It casts the next finesse, just like the Dwarven Gates. You're going to constantly have a finesse up. Uh, it's really good, and on top of that, you get the gift of finesse. Give four to all skills on all Strix allies and matching four or more gems. So with the Nimbus Bow, Nimbus Bow creates yellow and blue based on like strix allies and you make it stormcaller which is a strix you're making a ton of yellow a ton of blue you're getting a ton of extra turns so you're giving four to all skills every time you do that and you're doing it a lot so eventually your attack goes up crazy your your magic goes up crazy it starts dealing like 100 damage instead of 42 and there's always one of them up and they're always giving mana to each other because there's always a storm this thing is awesome I still use it to this day down in the delves I can just I'll show you I'll actually show a team here I still use it in the delves right now as my gems at work cardio right now here it is finesse finesse nimbus bow finesse we'll do one battle with this I almost made this my number one 
And you all probably know what the number one is by now, huh? Anyway, you take like a purple or a green here. Sometimes you you a lot of the time you'll have uh, like potions going with this team. But anytime you take an extra turn, look at its uh, look at its attack. It has 81 attack right now. Finesse in the first slot, 81 attack, right? Take an extra turn. Any extra turn, now it has 93 attack. Starts with 76 uh, magic, or now it has 76 magic. Also, it deals double skull damage versus yellow enemies. Reduce damage from skulls by 50%. Another, it's like all of its traits are good. So when I take these skulls, it's going to deal double damage to that yellow troop there. Boom, wrecked it. Um, let's see, we need some, uh, I guess we'll just take this yellow. Now we got a finesse up. Um, if we can cast it, it'll deal double damage for yellow enemies. All these enemies are yellow. Dealing 158 enemies to those two. And this is a deep delve. This is not, uh, like, level 20. You'd be one-shotting if it was level 20. We'll get all those extra turns now. Well, I guess we didn't get an extra turn there. But we would eventually. And it would be super strong. But keep casting on, like, the dude with the most health. And there we go. Delve done. Delve battle done. Using Stormcaller. Make sure you have it fully traded. I will finish that up later. But there's a team for you. Nimbus Bow, you're just going to have to wait for it to come in the Soul Forge. I will definitely let you know when it does. Let's go back to base rarity. Go back down to the commons. Also, on alongside of Finesse, I wanted to mention... Um, let's see. The other uh, Guardians that came along with it, like Persistence... Uh, 11 green, Guardian, Wargear, Construct. Deal 30 damage to an enemy and a random enemy. If the enemy uses green mana, deal double damage. There's a 25% chance to devour a random enemy. So, not bad. It has the same thing. Gift of Persistence. Give 4 to all allies. All, give 4 to all skills when on all Wargear allies when matching 4 or more gems. Uh, deal double skull damage versus green. Reduce damage from skulls by 50%. So, really good and early in the game. If you have like a green restriction and you're you're going against scalable content, these new guardians are really good for low level players to try out deeper delves and stuff like that, Tower of Doom, stuff like that, because you have a chance, 25% chance to devour a random enemy. Um, you're dealing double damage versus green. You're uh, you're gaining four to all skills on all war gears when matching four or more gems. It reduces damage from skulls by 50%. It deals double damage versus green enemy. Like. Use three of these. I've never used three persistences, but I just wanted to point out that it can devour, so gives you a chance to make it further in, like, you know, delves or whatever. And then the other one that I actually do use, I always use finesse, but uh, sometimes I also use another one of the uh, guardians, uh, ferocity. Eleven red, Taurus construct. Deal 42 damage to an enemy and a random enemy boosted by my life, attack, and armor. If the enemy uses red mana, deal double damage. You use it with, um, uh, like, Shaman, I think, class. And there's a weapon that does, like, red and... I think it's, uh, what is it? Oh, it's that Reaver. Um, Rage Reaver, I think it is the weapon. Rage Reaver with Shaman. That would be your hero. It's just like the finesse team. Ferocity, Ferocity. Uh, Rage Reaver with Shaman class. And then Ferocity. And it doesn't do the mana thing that finesse does. So finesse is a little bit better. I think finesse is the best guardian. But um, it does work as well. It's just not as fast as finesse. Not as reliable as finesse. But it still does work when you have like a red restriction. And you're going deep in a delve or, or a tower of doom or something. Um, and it has all the same things. Give four skills to all. Ugh. Give four to all skills on all Taurus allies and magic four or more gems. So just make your hero a Taurus, and you got four Tauruses. And uh, reduces damage from skulls by 50%. Deal double skull damage versus red enemies. The same things. The only thing, I think finesse is the best because it gives six mana to the other three. Uh, gives six mana to everything, you know. When it casts, or when there's a storm going, and you have a storm going at all times. So, Finesse, I think, is the best of these guardians, but 
Special shout out to Ferocity and Persistence. And Cunning for that matter. They're all pretty good. So get all the Guardians basically is the theme of this video. Get all your Guardians. And get them all fully traded and fully leveled and meddled up. Alright, the number one common on my list here. Top 10 commons in Gems of War in 2020. Um, what is it? It starts with a T. We have Thrall. I made it my number one because I still use it to this day. Uh, it's really good. Mana generator. And it only uses six purple mana. Uh, Darkstone human. Destroy 34 gems. Take two damage. If there are 13 or more red gems, gain an extra turn. It's just super duper helpful in late game. So I wanted to put it as my number one. Finesse should probably technically be number one, maybe, and Thrall should be like number two or three. But I still use Thrall now. It's on some of the fastest teams in the game on speedrun.com, the number one world record teams use Thrall. So I think this has to be number one. Uh, you could argue that it's not, but I think it's on the list, and I think it deserves a special mention because it's used on teams that are uh, have world records so and it's a common and it only uses six purple um, but with all that destroying and that low mana cost it gets stuff up pretty quickly you don't usually usually use that uh, 13 or more red gems gain an extra turn thing but allied humans gain two life gain one life for each purple ally and gain bonus purple mana from purple gem matches the whole reason it's number one is just because it's on world record teams and it's used with Zul'Goth and, 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 and High King Iron Gut and it gets them up really quickly. I don't know if I have a team I can show. Probably be City of Thieves. Delve level 500. So this is the highest level Delve you can do. Here you see Thrall, High King Iron Gut, Thrall, Essence of Evil, Zul'Goth with Orb Weaver, All Purple Banner. So number one was Thrall. Did you think it would be? Did you know? Did you? Were you kind of? What were you guessing? And when you take purple, Thrall up right away. Cast it. Gets King Iron Gut up right away. Cast it. Hope for, an, for uh, hope for a devour. Didn't get it, but you cast Thrall again. Gives you an extra turn when you do Iron Gut. So still didn't get it. So of course video luck here. Uh, I could cast my Zul'Goth, but I'm gonna wait till I get that dang Devour. Third time with a 74% chance. Didn't happen. You've seen it on video. That's Gems of War for you guys. Takes four tries with a 75% chance. <laughs> so now I have a 207% chance. They can't screw me now. And, um, you see how it killed that third troop as well? That's one of the, uh, talents on Orb Weaver. If you kill something, it has a chance to kill something else. So that's why it's, this is the world record team. Especially when that happens, then you just cast Zul'Goth. And hopefully you match your skulls up and kill that other troop there, but it didn't happen. Of course not, because I'm showing a video. And, um, just keep casting Thrall. Usually this thing's dead by now, but there you go. No trouble at all on the level 500 delve. As you can see, level 500. I would just hit this one, hit this one, and we're done. But there you go. That's my top 10 commons in the game. Um, I'll go over them again. Number 10 was Wraith. Number 9 was Priestess. Number 8 was Ghoul. Number 7 was Dire Wolf. Number 6 was Firebomb. Special mention to Bombot. Uh, number 5 was Rockworm. Number 4 was Justice. Special mention to the other Guardians. Humility, Courage, etc. Number 3 was Dwarven Gate. Number 2 was Finesse. Special mention to Ferocity, Persistence, the other Guardians, etc. And number 1 was Thrall. So, that's your video for today. Please like, share, subscribe. Um, consider joining. It helps a a lot i'm considering saying you know if we get to 20 members i might do a live stream it would have to be at the butt crack of dawn but i haven't i'm not committing yet but maybe if we get another member i'll really really think about it uh i think we have 17 now we only need three more and uh i consider doing a live stream at the butt crack of dawn but i'll let you know ahead of time that way maybe some of you can make it there 
Um, yeah, if we can get 20 members, I'll consider doing a live stream. And we'll talk about it more once we get to, like, 18 or 19. But, yeah. Like, share, subscribe. See you all next time. Hope you got something from this. The top 10 commons in the game right now, in my opinion. And uh, I'll see y'all next time. Peace.